dear students we are moving to the next uh, part of note making lesson sorry note making title topic we have already covered the first part of it so you have already known what is note making note making is you are reading something and making points out of it important points based on the questions given to you so you should first of all you need to understand the paragraph that you are reading if you don't don't understand read it again and again focusing on the questions that have been asked to you so read the following passages and make notes by filling in the boxes washo a female chimpanzee who was the first non human to learn human sign language passed away on october 30 2007 at the ripe age of ripe old age of 42 washo was born in africa in september 1965 she was caught in the wild and at 10 months was taken by biologists allen and beatrice gardner as part of a research experiment to teach human languages to animals they launched a new project with washo as the candidate Chimpanzees were chosen for this study because they are intelligent and social animals. However, a major disadvantage with the chimp is that it does not possess vocal apparatus that would allow the production of human speech. But as chimps use their hands a lot in their natural habitat, scientists decided to use this innate trait in their training. So the project was to teach Washo to use the American sign language. ASL is the widely used sign language of the deaf community in North America. The gardeners treated Washo like a hearing impaired human infant. Helpers communicated with Washo by using ASL rather than with a spoken voice. The first word that Washo said by using ASL rather than with a sign language was toothbrush. And in the first 6 years she learned approximately 150 signs. At the age of her death it was reported that Washo could reliably use 350 signs. In addition to individual signs Washo displayed the ability to combine signs in novel and meaningful ways for example she referred to her toilet as dirty good and the refrigerator as open food drink the gardeners treated washo like a hearing impaired human infant helpers communicated with washo by using asl rather than with a spoken voice the first word that washo said by using asl rather than with a sign was toothbrush and in the first 6 years she learned approximately 150 signs at the time of her death it was reported that washo could reliably use 350 signs in addition to individual signs washo displayed the ability to combine signs in novel and meaningful ways for example she referred to her toilet as dirty good and the refrigerator as open food drink roger fosters the caretaker of washo was interested in finding out if chimpanzees were capable of transmitting sign languages to their offspring because washo did not have any offspring an offspring fost fouts arranged for washo to adopt a male infant named luilus luilus After a short adjustment period the experimenters observed Washo signing come baby to Luilis who jumped in her arms on his first or eighth day with Washo Luilis made her first sign in time he learned to use more signs and thus became the first animal to acquire a human language from a non-human to convince skeptics for fouts released a video tape of the chimpanzee to chimpanzee communication through signs 
now let us find out the answers washo was a now tell me what is washo so you need to go back to the paragraph and find out what was washo so washo was a female chimpanzee it's given there straight away she was a female chimpanzee born in dash and was caught born in africa she was caught in the wild and at 10 months she was caught in the wild so 10 months and wild first word to say with signs which is the first word used by washo to say with signs let us check a toothbrush isn't it toothbrush was the first word used by washo take okay name of the caretaker was who took care of washo that is roger fouts the caretaker of washo okay taken in by biologist in the wild okay by ellen and beatrice gardener taken in by biologist ellen and beatrice that is there here Yeah, Ellen and Beatrice Gardener. They were the biologists who took washo. And Jim chosen for study because they are intelligent and they are social animals. Okay. So once when you read the paragraph, you will not understand it. If you read four or five times without having going backward, you can answer the questions easily. next passage has been given we shall read this passage at least twice so that you will get the correct answers the coffee plant about coffee plant this is the coffee plant an evergreen shrub or a small tree of african origin begins to produce fruit 3 or 4 years after being planted the fruit is hand over hand gathered when it's fully ripe and reddish purple in color the ripened fruits of the coffee shrubs are processed to separate the coffee seeds from their covering and form the pulp two different techniques are in use a wet process and a dry process the wet process first the fresh fruit is pulped by a pulping machine some pulp still cling to the coffee however and this residues residue is removed by fermentation in tanks the few remaining traces of pulp are taken then removed by washing the coffee seeds are then dried to a moisture content of about 12% either by exposure to the sun or by hot air dryers if dried in the sun they must be turned by hands several times a day for even drying the dry process in the dry process the fruits are immediately placed to dry either in the sun or in hot air dryers considerably more time and equivalent is needed equipment is needed for drying than in the wet process then the seeds are mechanically freed from their coverings 
okay we'll read the paragraph once again and look first look into the questions they have given the coffee plant begins to produce fruit and they have asked origin year two different techniques of processing are one they have not given one more is given residue removed by and dried either in this is in wet process and this is in dry process must be turned by dash dried either in or dash process that needs more time and equipment is called dash okay let's now go through the passage once again keeping in mind the we shall read the passage once again then we'll try to answer the questions the coffee plant an evergreen shrub or a small tree of african origin begins to produce fruit 3 to 4 years after being planted the fruit is hand gathered when it is fully ripe and reddish purple in color the ripened fruits of the coffee shrubs are processed to separate the coffee seeds from their covering and form the pulp two different techniques are in use a wet process and a dry process the wet process first the fresh fruit is pulped by a pulping machine some pulp still clings to the coffee however and this re- residue is removed by fermentation in tanks the few remaining traces of pulp are then removed by washing the coffee seeds are then dried to a moisture content of about 12% either by exposure to the sun or by hot air dryers if dried in the sun they must be turned by hands several times a day for even drying the dry process in the dry process the fruits are immediately placed to dry either in the sun or in hot air dryers considerably more time and equipment is needed for drying than in the wet process then the seeds are mechanically freed from their coverings so let us look into the questions that have been given there so the coffee plant begins to produce fruit fruits when so the coffee plant begins to produce fruit 3 or 4 years after being planted okay then origin of coffee is from the small tree of african origin it is from africa so two different techniques of processing we have already seen one is the wet processing and the dry processing in the wet processing residue removed by removed by fermentation in tanks then must be turned turned by if dried in the sun must be turned by by hot air dryers isn't it if dried in the sun they must be turned by hand okay they must be turned in the hand several times okay now the dry process in the dry process dried either in either in the sun or in hot air dryers or head hot air dryers process that needs more time and equipment is more time and equipment is needed for dry process so that is the answer let us go to next passage aborigines are brown skinned people who live in parts of australia not closely related to any human known race they number only about 50000 with very wiry hair and deep set eyes these primitive people live in small tribal groups in the drier lands of north and northeast of australia an aborigine needs little more than food which he gets through hunting and food gathering in his own wide territory he eats roots grub grubs seeds and even caterpillars ground into flour he may also eat kangaroos crocodiles porpoises and dugongs for hunting he carries clubs stone axes 
and the famous weapon the boomerang which is used to knock down birds he also fishes for food the house that the aborigines live in is called a wurley it usually consists of two forked sticks and a cross bar with strips of bar laid against it they build such dwelling places only when necessary and leave them when their tribe moves to the next place inside or outside the wurley they make fire by twirling a pointed stick into a piece of dry wood and they cook their food by it on hot ashes the aborigines may be a backward people but they are known for two things their extraordinary sight and their ability to find water either by studying animal or bird movements or by seeking water bearing roots experts at reading the ground they have also been known to help the police in tracking down animals and finding lost children now they have not given you your diagram they have given you just questions which you need to answer point wise physical features you need to keep in mind their food habit you need to keep in mind and place of dwelling you need to keep in mind keeping in these questions in mind let us read the paragraph once again so aborigines are brown skinned people who live in parts of australia not closely related to any human race they number only about 50000 with wiry hair and deep set eyes these primitive people live in small tribal groups in the drier lands of north and north east australia so first is physical feature already we have seen some of the physical features they are brown skinned people and also they have wiry hair and deep set eyes those are their physical features next is food habits let's concentrate on food habits the aborigines may be a backward people but they are known for two things their extraordinary sight and their ability to find water either by studying animal or bird movement or by seeking water bearing roots experts at reading the ground they have also been known to help the police in tracking down animals and finding lost children sorry something we have missed it okay and aborigines needs little more than food which he gets through hunting and food gathering in his own wide ter- territory he eats roots grubs seeds and even caterpillars ground in flower he may also eat kangaroos crocodiles porpoises and dugongs so already the food is mentioned here the answer is roots grubs seeds caterpillars kangaroos crocodiles porpoises and dugongs are their foods are their food habits next we have to keep in mind place of dwelling the house that the aborigines live in the called a wurley it usually consists of two fork sticks and a cross bar with strips of bark laid against it they build such dwelling places only when necessary and leave them when their tribe move to the next place inside or outside the wurley they make fire by twirling a pointed stick into a piece of dry wood and they cook their food by it on hot ashes so already we have got the answer the place that they live is wurley two fork sticks and a cross bar with stripped strips of bark laid against it and temporary dwelling is place built only when necessary and left when the tribe moves to the next place so they have two types of two types of dwelling places so we are we are come to an end with this note making so in order to make note you need to first read the questions first read the paragraph once then read the questions then keeping in mind the main points or the questions that these are asked to you you have to read the paragraph once or twice if you don't understand once again you read read it again and try to answer the questions and note making is not just your answering in a sentences long sentences you need to answer point wise that is why you need to be very careful